wanting Hodge to win a one-on-one -on -one against Schofield. Puopolo got a high tackle. Back to Hodge. That's a goal, I think. It is. Hodge has done it from nowhere. He better have done it. The first team in the 18-team competition to go back to back to back. They're three pieces. Collingwood by a point. Lockyer brings it in. Ryder sandwich between two pies. Back of the Packers, Windelich. Quick handball to Hocking. Back to Lovett Murray. He goes short. It's a mark to Zaharakis. Zaharakis has kicked the goal. The Bombers are in front of the G. You are now listening to the Molten Fantasy Sports Podcast. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are listening to us, this is the Molten Fantasy Sport Podcast, and I'm your host, Rob Kennedy, the Super Coach Hawk, sitting here with my friend, Mickey Dell. How are you, mate? Robbie, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to our AFL Super Coach Podcast this evening. Pretty good week of games, Robbie. Some big scorers in there. Yeah, I know. We're happy. We're a little bit up and about. We, uh, If anyone who's been listening along for a while, welcome back. For anyone who's new today, welcome for the first time. We started off rusty round one, but I tell you what, since then, I don't believe we've got too much wrong. We're clawing our way back up. We both mm. got over 2,200 this week, which was a very good score for this week. There were some big scores, but you had to be smart with who was in your team and you had to be smart with a couple of loopholes within your own team as well with a few players named out. Um, how did you utilize your bench? How did you give yourself the best opportunity to get those scores out there? We'll talk a little bit about that, but um, I'm feeling good about how my team is starting to grow back on and I'm sure you're kind of the same. Yeah, for sure. A couple of the the players that we've brought up in previous podcasts, you know, your, your set of fills, even though he's only scored an 80-odd this week, uh, English on fire, um, your primos that we've said to hold on to, your Lairds, your Olivers, um, the list goes on, doesn't it, where your proven primos are now starting to fire. Bit of a question mark over Doherty, but I see him coming good as well. And will you be bringing in Adam Saad? He's good, isn't he? He's had a great mm. year, Adam Sart. I mean, mate, it's do you know the <laughs> it's the love and the hate of doing this podcast, which is because we do so much research for a lot of our shows, we mention so many names. It's like um it's like when you sit with your mates and you're talking about bets and you go, Oh, I looked at Mackay for first goal. Like you always is the old I looked at, I looked at or I mentioned, and we did mention Sard and we put up that stat of Sard without Zach yeah. Williams, and it was a pretty telling stat. But look. You were never going to look past the dockies. You were, you know, there's certain things that I have to tell myself that it's great to say we were thinking about it. Um, anyone who's following us along on Twitter at Supercoach Hawk for myself at Big Horse for Mickey Dell, um, I did post the text that I sent you uh, before the trade, which was, yeah. mate, do I have the peanuts to choose Mason Wood over Jack Zebel? And you said, mate, imagine if it came off. Well, sadly, I didn't have the peanuts, but if I'm being honest to myself. I was never going to make that call. The DPP of Zeeble, the cheaper price, but Mason Wood has looked good. He's looked very good. I know he's got a bit of an injury cloud at the moment, but man, he looked good. Yeah, he looked really good. Yeah. But we're going to dive in to uh, what we're going to do in today's podcast is we're going to review the scores. We're going to go through each match reasonably quickly. We're not going to hold everybody up too much and go too in depth. We're going to talk about where mm. the scores, who stood out. Um, we may gloat a little bit, especially in game one with Tim English. I did tell everyone to VC him up. And he, it was a nice way for me to start my weekend. But we'll make sure we go to our sponsors first, um, support those who support us. And one of those first sponsors is uh, Snap Fitness in Epson and Bendigo. Are you looking to make good on that New Year's resolution? Finding it hard to get into the gym due to not having anyone to look after the kids? Head on in and see Mark, Emma and the team at Snap Fitness Bendigo and Epsom for all your fitness needs. Both Epsom and Bendigo locations offer free child mining, which gives you the chance to head on in, get a workout done without worrying about the kids. All staff have working with children's checks and are super helpful with whatever your children need. Snap Fitness also offers a wide variety of classes such as strength and reformer Pilates, Tabata, strength classes, as well as one-on-one -on -one PT sessions. So head on in and say good day to the guys at either gym and tell them the Molten Boys sent you. 
We say it every episode. We thank those who sponsor us, and mm. that's no different here with Snap Fitness 24-7 in Epsom and Indigo. Good friends of yours um, and yeah. massive supporters of the show, so we do thank them. Um, mate, let's dive in. So Bulldogs yeah. versus Brisbane. I've already talked about Tim English and his 139, but what stood out for you in this game, mate? Um, from a playing point of view, Bontembele was unreal, but his six frees against killed him with his score of 89. I've got him. Uh, I thought he was really good. And you take those six frees out, and that's 120, 130. So there's no complaints there. You got Libba. I'm glad you held on to Libba, 120. Good boy. Uh, McRae back, kind of, 114. Bailey Dale, I trade him out because he's bleeding like you wouldn't believe. Scores 100. Um, yeah. But he, yeah, what he needed thirty touches to get his hundred, so still not overly sold on him. And my big mistake for the week, I had a I had a donut on the field, and I had Baker without an E on the bench, and so oh. I missed out on ninety. So if that was the case, I would have went well over twenty three hundred. But yeah, you live and you learn. So he looks really good. He had his well, he's had his opportunities on the wing. Uh, first two weeks, wasn't really that sold on him, but you're obviously going to keep him there for some cash generation. But the doggies up and about, they had a lot of the ball, and he looked really good out there. Yeah, mate, you mentioned it. I'm pretty sure it might have even been our first podcast, which was the type of teams that score big points, um, and the doggies are one of them. So, mate, if you're playing out on the wing for the Western Bulldogs, you're every chance to put up a reasonable score. And at the basement price that he was at the start – I'm holding him every day of the week until we get close to filling the team. I reckon he'll be one of the last possibly to go in my midfield um, yeah. before like hopefully filling them with primos because, like I just said, he's out on the wing for the Western Bulldogs and he's going to keep breaking that, bait, uh, that um, break even at the moment. But he looked really right. good, really comfortable in that yeah. position. Yep. Yeah. Man, I just noticed – I, I normally do a lot of research. I only just noticed that Bailey Dale got 102. Did he get bulk points in like the last quarter or something? Because – I didn't, he wasn't doing that all game, was he? Uh, it's, it's what he does. He just accumulates. But, like, you, you look at his stats and 30 touches for 100 points, that's uh, mm. that's not great, you know, when you're talking about, like, you, you're running defenders in the AFL that if, you, if you're getting 30 points, I thought, sorry, 30 touches like Saad and he's scoring 120, 130. So, yeah, Bontempelli yeah, played one of the best 89 point games. I had a couple of bitch and moans Absolutely. about the uh, the Super Kirk scoring this week and some of the numbers, and we'll get to them in some of the later games, maybe bring up a mm. few numbers to you. But he played one of the best 89, 89 point games I've ever seen. He played so yep. well. And uh, Harris Andrews, uh, so for Brisbane, 130. He was just doing his intercept marking best. Uh, he's always going to bob up. He's one of those interesting ones that you you know he's playing a lockdown role. So we've always said be wary of those type players. But he's going to have games like this where he gets his his big score. Lockie Neal bounced back with a nice 117. Josh Dunkley mm-hmm. just keep on keeping on with 108. Um, I really like Starsevich's game. And it's nice to see, um, you know, Will Ashcroft and, uh, and, and Darcy Wilmot sort of Bounce back. I mean, 69 is not, not anything to really rave about, but he looked a lot better and he was very quiet to half time. And in the second half, his, his points skyrocketed. So maybe yeah. he's just playing into his own. Um, some of he the was very quiet at three quarter time. He was only yeah. on 28 points at three quarter time. Three quarter time, was it? Even even better. Yeah, he had a really good end to the game. Um, the other one, McKenna, McKenna was the other way around. So it's kind of like they flip-flopped and everybody knew this was the tough call between these two types of players. McKenna actually went out of the gun really quickly and then sort of quietened off as it went through. Um, it was interesting to see, you know, Zorko did not follow up. He had a, he had a 68. So, look, I think Brisbane had got a little bit to still uh, find out in their team. Their forward line looked extremely average. Um, and for that list, I think they've got to, they've got to find a little bit more, but... Yeah, it was good to hold on to Libba. He had a massive game. To get the 120, yeah. though, again, he's 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 having to do a lot to get the points. But, yeah, happy I hold on to him, and it was good to see what he did. And then a little shout-out to Riley Garcia. Ten touches, two tackles, two frees against for minus six. <laughs> he, he's our spud of the week, surely. <laughs> Imagine getting minus six in a game. Like, and I think he gave out a couple of free kicks in that last quarter too. It was very fumbly. I think one was a 50 metre as well. And yeah. Mm-hmm. He yeah, gave away two 50s in the last quarter. Yeah. 
I could see it in his eye too. Like, you know, when you're like a fringe player and you just do something like that and you're like, I'm not getting picked next week. Like, it's as simple mm. as that. So, and yeah, yeah I feel I saw for that. That. yeah. that's what you actually have the, the AFL feels for them, I reckon. But yeah, we move on. Unless you got anything else major in that one, mate. No, that was a, it was a cracking game of footy, I guess, from a contest point of view. It was pretty defensive, but a good way to start the round. So we move on to Collingwood v Richmond. And there's a few names in here, mate, that we've mentioned uh, to Trent, who was on here in our last podcast as well, gave out a shout out to, you know, he, he actually mentioned the steel side bottoms of someone who's really producing and someone that you could possibly put the VC on. And he wasn't wrong with a nice 114. Um, Collingwood, again, playing the run and gun style, just poor execution with their 815. Um, I'll tell you who's still the two standouts for me, and then I'll give you one who's under the radar. Jordan Degoe is showing that he can actually put together a pretty special season and actually starting to show that he could be an impactful midfielder this year. And I, I wouldn't be shocked if more people start jumping on board. I think Josh Dacos is massively going under the radar this year in just his consistency in that midfield for Collingwood. Mm-hmm. And the other one is Toby Nankervis. No one's been mm-hmm. talking about him, but the numbers that Toby Nankervis is putting up, getting another 124 this weekend, I've got a feeling he's, I'm just having a look now, he's averaging 118, his highest score is that 124, and his lowest is 112. He's He's been a really strong performer for Richmond this year. Yeah, if we um, take a look back at the Rucks pod that we did in regards to your point of differences, Nankervis was the first one that we brought up. Yeah, yep. I think he just he fitted perfectly into that. You know what? You can't sleep on somebody that's going to do the sole ruck himself, and he does a lot of that ruck work. I know they've brought in a um, that other guy who's nearly seven foot tall as well. Um, his name will come to me. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, and he's going to find himself. But Nan Curvis, and he's got the captaincy now, which is interesting, and and sort of yeah. doing, doing really well. I mean, the big news out of this this game was obviously Darcy Cameron after people bringing him in and actually started like a bull out of a gate too and then going down with an injury. And I think I think Colin would have come out and said six to eight weeks is the information I'm seeing right. from uh, from Darcy yep. Cameron. Um, anything else major? I mean, Tim Taranto doing his thing. A lot of people jumping on Dan Rioli, but he only came through with a, a 56. Um, I'm kind of having a look. You know, Pendlebury's, Pendlebury's just going to keep averaging 100 until he plays 450 games. He just is amazing. Um, and again, Tom Mitchell just going solid as well with another 109. So, yeah, Collingwood really cementing himself. If, I was having a think today, mate. It was if I could really take back one of my comments, if you know, if you could just have a moment, and, and yep. I won't give you a question without notice, but maybe something might come to you during the podcast. Underrating Collingwood's list is the one comment I would take back. Mm-hmm. I, I, I will put my hand up now and say I'm wrong. This, this team looks very, very good. Very good. And I enjoy watching them play football. Absolutely. Yeah, just it'll be a little bit concerning moving forward with no Ruckman for the next eight weeks. I think if anyone can do it, somehow this team will work out a way to do it. This team will work out a way to do it. Do you, do you have any understanding? I, I know maybe some news broke. Do you know of any news of, of where they might go yes. with their Ruck position? Yeah, they're going to look at Frampton through the Ruck now. Okay. And um, Yeah, being backed up by Dan McStay. So, but after seeing what they did on the weekend, they may even push Johnson through the ruck. So, we'll just he have to wait. Good. He did. He's got. He's got, he's, got, he's got a leap. He's agile. He's actually looked pretty good coming into it. And it might take a bit of pressure off him as well to hold his spot as a forward, um, mm. especially with um, yeah, Ginnivan's got to come back at some point. What does that look like? And and a few different things there. But yeah, Frampton, I don't mind that. That's not a bad shout. He could go and at least do a job for them. And yeah, they've yeah. got the cattle. They've got the cattle to produce. Yeah. I think the only one we didn't mention there was Liam Baker with a big 143. He's got the ability to do that. Um, I think similar to a Dan Rioli, he can really just have some big games, but just a little bit too inconsistent for me. And you just don't quite know which role he's going to rock up and play. I mean, look, he's got a higher score of 143 and a lower score of 63 in three games. To me, it's just you can't risk that for the biscuit too much. That's your roller coaster. Yeah. Yeah. So we move on. Uh, (laughs) Hawthorne, North Melbourne. Did you watch this one, mate? I did. What's your I thoughts? Uh, Will Day, sensational. I thought he was best on ground. His ball use is awesome. Uh, Sicily, pretty good. Newcomb was a bull inside. McKenzie, yes. our rookie that I was playing on the ground, he was good. Uh, Tyler Brockman, <clears throat> first game for the year. 
Uh, 89 points. He's only priced at 123K as a forward. Um, I'm not overly sure he's going to score that high ever again. No, he's, got, he's got to kick the goals. He's got to kick yeah, goals. Um, so right. yeah, I wouldn't. I, don't, I wouldn't be jumping on that too quickly. I like him. He looked. He looked really good. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't be jumping yeah. on someone who's going to get you too many points. Yeah. And uh, Warple was disappointing. Mm. Didn't mm. didn't really fire a shot. But you know what? Hawthorne winning. If that's what it takes for them to win, then I'm sure he'd be happy. Not us super coaches out there that might have him, but yeah, the team would be happy if he has 15 touches and they win the game. So yeah, and uh, Fergus Green another 50 odd points. So that's just your little cash generation there on your your Ford's bench if you've got him. I really like Fergus Green. I think he's going to be all the better for Mitch Lewis coming back as well. Um, he's got a lovely he's got a lovely kick on him. He has yeah. a really nice set shot kick on him that you sort of have a bit of confidence in, and I think I think he'll be all the better. I think they've got to look at Meek. Uh, Lloyd Meek's not a he's not a forward. He's a ruck, and so they've got to make a choice between Ned Reeves or Lloyd Meek. Um, That's where I think this is going to go. They're going to drop one ruckman. Mm-hmm. Mitch Lewis is going to go forward, and he'll run the forward line with Fergus Green, and Kaczynski will stay out. Yeah, I I agree too. I don't know who then sort of takes the second ruck. I'm not sure quite how that works, um, but. They'll uh they'll work it out. For me, the she Sheasel just keeps on giving. He was quietish in the first half. For people that didn't watch the game, just be aware Hawthorne played a very high press. So mm-hmm. they didn't allow North Melbourne at all to chip across the back line. So Zebel getting his 78, he just missed out. I mean, that's that 20 point difference between 78 to 98, not allowing some of the junk time. Sheasel took a lot of the kickouts. Um but don't panic too much because I think certain teams, you get to an MCG or things like that, I think North will be allowed to chip around a lot more. Hawthorne and Sam Mitchell played a very tactical game to get this win against uh, this win against North Melbourne. But look, I think Zerha looks pretty good when he goes in the middle for them. I think Zebel will bounce back. Um, and I think the, the, obviously the big news that we haven't touched on, and just I'm sure everybody's aware unless they're living under a rock, was LDU was an absolute late out. And a few people yeah. got quite caught out by that with it being a call about 10 minutes before the game. So, yes, we move on. Yep. Well done to my Hawks. It might be our uh, only win. I should I should celebrate a little bit more, actually. We, we don't know what we'll get here. <laughs> GWS versus Carlton. Now, Carlton with nine goals, 20, to GWS's nine goals, 10. It was the Josh Kelly uh, show. And for us who had him in round one were – didn't surprise us to see this kind of score, but did hurt us because I don't think too many held on to him because we had to start getting some points back. Before we get into super coach relevance, mate, what's your thoughts on the descent call to Stephen Cornelio late in the match? Shit out. <laughs> uh, it, it, it changed the game. GWS had the run. They were coming back. They were playing good footy. Cornelio goes, what's going on here? And a free kick right in front, it is, it's disgusting. And the fact that that turned the game and effectively won the game for Carlton, it just it wrecked a pretty good game of footy. Like it was wet, but it was still like bodies were flying everywhere. Mm. You could see that like Carlton are going to be a good team this year, but GWS were playing well. Yep. But it's, it's like it, it deflated whatever air they had left in them. So, yeah, not great, but... Some takeaways from this game. Our Buckley boy that we spoke about in our last podcast with the low yeah. break evens, 99 again. Yeah. Uh, Haynes, he's back playing across half back now, as Justin called out on a previous podcast, 94 again. Uh, coming, I'm glad I got rid of him, 22 touches, 74 points. Whitfield looks like a disaster. He's It's like he's forgotten how to kick, Rob. Yeah. 27 yeah, touches, 72. It, he was kicking it sideways and not intentionally on the weekend. No, it's disappointing. Sad to watch, really. Yeah. yeah. And then Callahan again, quiet. Toby Green, quiet. Himmelberg, just not worth the hassle. So, you know, you're probably your top two there, Kelly and Green. But I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it to you with Kelly coming back. Does yeah. that affect Canilio and how he scores? I'll say this though, like I've watched Canelo now a couple of times and look, I wish I could have a chat with the super coach gods to understand things. I think we put too much emphasis on a hardball get out of the middle, throwing it on the boot, a forward getting outmarked by a defender and it being called basically a minus score. 
Um, and I think Kinelio actually does that a bit. He throws it on his boot as a clearance to sort of get it out where I watched them a few times. They do a lot of taps now to Kelly. Kelly's now the release to Tom Green, where with Kelly out, it was the tap to Kinelio, which was going to Green. So he's a lot more efficient. But yeah, I'm so I'm concerned. To basically answer your question, I'm concerned. I think Canelio is going to still put up his big points, but you could see that the Kelly and Green are probably the more consistent midfielders that they look to use the football through, and they looked a lot more efficient and had more space when they got the ball at the same time. So I'm nervous with Canelio. He's got a massive break even this week too. I hate yeah. doing it, but I might do a bit of a one more sideways move this week. I'll um I might bring it up at the end. We'll we'll also definitely have a, a podcast uh late Wednesday night, which might drop Thursday to go yeah. over all captains and, and trades. But can I say I'm gonna say three stats to you here, mate? And I want you to yeah. try you probably know the answer, but I'm gonna I'm gonna run past you. 42 disposals and 13 clearances only got Paddy Cripps 116. Mm-hmm. 42 disposals and 13 clearances. I'll go to the next one. 39 disposals, a goal, and 10 marks. Who am I talking about? Doherty and Cripps. Doherty got 87 points for that. At, at, at And his efficiency wasn't even that bad when I was looking at it. But Canelio was the same. Canelio had 29 disposals, two marks, and three tackles. For 58 points. So yeah, I'll, have, I'll have to get up a stat from before. I saw in the – yeah, Taylor Adams from Collingwood had 20 touches on the weekend for 32 points. Like, yeah, well, that's even less of a ratio. I'm looking at 29 mm. disposal for 58 points. So for every disposal, he's averaging two – he's averaging two points. Mm-hmm. I'm like, look, unless you're absolutely turning it over and giving away goals for it and things like that, I can't remember who, who mentioned the tweet, but – they are starting to say super coach is rewarding too much of the chippers around the back line. And that's yep. that's what I super coach was better than that. Super coach was about the clearances and the rebounds and the inside fifties. Mm-hmm. So there's a bit of a ratio not working at the moment, maybe with the modern day football. And a lot of people are up and about about it. But um, yeah, look, I don't want to which dive into why, it too much. Yeah, which is yeah. why I'm going to bring in Saad this week for that exact point. Oh ah, yeah, <laughs> who are you moving? Who are you thinking of moving? Um well I've got to get rid of Cameron. Darcy Cameron. Oh, so, okay. Yep. That's one definite move that I've got to make. And I yeah. still had 300K in the bank. So oh, that's right. You had good You had good coin this week, didn't you? That's right. Yeah, yeah I, I really I really like Saad's role. I don't think you can go wrong with bringing in Saad. I think they're going to use him all day, every day, the way that he is. Um, and look, mate, I'm not, I'm not even <laughs> contemplating moving Doherty. He's still putting up the numbers. He's still getting the ball. He's one of those ones where I'm just going to have to ride the train now and and see what happens. So yeah, I'm I'm okay with that. Um, mate, we move on. How many is that? We've done four games. We'll go one more, and then we'll go to our other sponsor. Uh, your mob, your mob. Now you cost me. A, well, you didn't cost me the tip. I backed your mob in actually because you had a few mm. good ins this week. Um, so St Kilda versus Essendon. St Kilda just came out firing. Essendon, I'm pretty sure, got it back to a draw at one point, if I'm correct. And then um, mm-hmm. St Kilda found a way to finish it off. Now, uh, Mason Wood with a big 134. I've heard he's done a – is it a bit of a shoulder that he's done? Shoulder, he a, yeah. yeah. Potentially can still play this week, but, yeah, not sure. He just is just rejuvenated out on that. He, he's a bit on a wing role and and getting and playing kind of like a defensive. I say defensive. He's getting a lot of his ball defensive, but still finds a way to sort of get on the scoreboard. He kicked the first goal of the game, so he had a one thirty four, which was massive. Um, Brad Crouch just keeps on scoring with a one eleven. Wilkie one hundred four. Ross one hundred four. Uh, Marshall disappointing again with a seventy eight, but you know I probably ride the train a little bit longer. Um, that community again, like 65, look pretty solid. Um, who else we got here? You'll probably know more about your boys. Now, Setterfield, let's talk about Setterfield. Setterfield had an 82, but from all accounts of what I saw, they put a bit of work into him as well. So I'm still okay yeah, with the yeah. 82 that he put up. I don't have an issue with that. Everybody gets a bit nervous. Someone doesn't score 100. Like for the price that you've got him at, he'll, he knows his role. He looks all right. But mate, what else did you see from that game that's, um, that's worth mentioning. Uh, Jack Sinclair, 26 touches for 63 points. Yep. 
Yeah. But his price, wow. he's priced at over 600000 so he'll be coming down and a very gettable price in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, for Essendon, if anyone ever thinks about picking Jake Stringer, I'll pot- potentially walk to your house and call you a dickhead because he doesn't <laughs> belong in anyone's team at all. He, uh, If there was a mid-season trade period, I'd trade him for a half-drinking bottle of Pepsi Max and I'd take it. <laughs> I wouldn't even care who took the sips out of it either. He frustrates yeah, he's, me so much. He's, he's, he's never he's never been my favourite player at all. Somehow he finds yeah. to kick he, he finds a way to kick five against Hawthorne probably every time or something. But yeah, I've just never been a fan of him at all. Yeah. He's the kind yeah. of guy which I would just he, is he in his non contract year this year? Is this his is this his year or did they end up paying him? Is that this have they already paid him? He's just the guy oh. I wouldn't give the money to. He's just Let's the guy I wouldn't out. give the money to. Yeah. Pay him out. Let him go. Yeah. I'd so Jack rather, Sinclair, Jack Sinclair, Sinclair just, yeah, Jack Sinclair, just to let you know, he dropped 30K. So he's down to 595. And what's his um, break even now? He's, he's break even still really high. His break even yeah. is uh, 154. Like 100. Yeah. 154. So he's had a, I'm trying to see what he got. He's a, his lowest scores are 63. He had a 124. And so I'm not quite sure what his what his other score. I don't have it right in front of me right now. I think now, it was but... like a 116 as well. Yeah, he'd be an interesting one to watch, isn't he? He's um, yeah. Yeah. if he doesn't hit his break even, or if he doesn't get up near it anyway, he's not going to get 154. He could... He's not doing he's not doing those kind of numbers just yet. He to be, I've got to be try. I've got to be totally honest. I need to watch the more St Kilda games now. I haven't seen enough of what's going on. For some reason, that's been the game that hasn't quite fitted in with. And I watched a lot of football this weekend too. Um, yeah. But that was one that I, um, that was one that I didn't quite get to watch. But um, I'm, I'm not surprised that St Kilda's the the team that's had the least amount of goals and overall score kicked against them in the first three rounds, given their very defensive brand of footy. Um, mm. But it's working for them. They're doing well. They're getting their rebounds from fifty, and Mason Woods playing an unbelievable brand of footy out there on the wing. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sinclair, if he drops another forty k. And I can upgrade two rookies into him. I'm jumping on that straight away. Yeah, he, he still he still has his role, knows how to get the footy. He's pretty effective mm. when he gets it as well. So don't mind it. For sure. Mate, we've got uh, we've got four games to go. But until then, I'm going to play a little ad for another one of our sponsors in the Standard Squeeze. The Standard Squeeze helps you pour one standard shot at a time so you know exactly how much you're drinking without any of the guesswork. No more broken glass bottles with their food-grade quality plastic. Throw your squeeze into the esky, the back of the ute, or into your back pocket. Responsible drinking with convenience. So go on, have a squeeze at thestandardsqueeze.com and use the code MOLTON15 for 15% off at checkout. Absolutely. Make sure you use the uh, MOLTON15 code at the Standard Squeeze to get 15% off your Standard Squeeze products. You for saw, sure. well, you, anyone who's watching us on YouTube right now, you can see Mickey Dell mm. with the four in one cup. Can't oh, delicious. Speak of it highly enough. And I, you saw I use this. There. I used this on my way to work today for a coffee cup. Yeah. And now now I've got me a CC and dry and some, uh, yeah, some gin, uh, ginger in there. It's it's delicious. It scares it me how similar we, it scares me how similar we are. I had my coffee in there this morning. And I had a little CC when I got home tonight. Too. <laughs> very good. It, no, very good. We and we thank them so much. I mean, they've been yeah. fantastic with us, providing us with packs, merchandise um, to give back to our listeners as well. We we do the the squeezer the squeezer of the week, um, mm. which I think do you do you have that info in front of you? Who our squeezer of the week was with our under and overs competition that we played. I do. So our winner this week is Thurgood's Dreads in in memory of Joshy Thurgood that played probably a grand total of one game for the Hawks. <laughs> he scored <laughs> 2,326. He beat This Is The Way and Game of Sloans were both equal second, one point behind him. So... I tell you what, it's close at the top. So we'll make sure we, we we'll get in contact with him, or if he can get in contact with us, and we'll we'll get that standard squeeze pack out to you. Um, I do want again, to give a shout out to this week, uh, old mates mates, which is a a work mate of mine, Dave. Um, he's about a thousand years old, but loves his super coach. 
Yeah. So, Pete, if you're listening in, good work, mate. We'll get you there. Good man. Good man. I love it. I love it. Very good. We get a few little followers now and then, which is great. We've got a few chats. Uh, mm. Phil's been hitting us up a bit on the weekend. He even he had has, to apologize yeah. for having a bit of a wind. It's all right, Phil. Stay strong. We're teaching him as we go along, even though he's scoring higher than we are just at the moment. But uh, I think we're clawing our way back up the list. But there's a long way to go. Be careful not to try and dig your way out of a hole. Always climb. Always climb. But we move on to the showdown. And what an upset. Um, I don't know if you tipped it. I didn't. Um, yeah, I did. Adelaide, 117 v 86. You tipped him, did you? Nice tip. Yeah, I don't rate, I don't rate Port Adelaide. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So um, big game here, mate. What were the standouts for you? Rosie, I've got him. Yeah. And uh, he, he was really, really good. Really clean behind the ball. Used the ball well. Got an early knock to his face. And I thought, shit, I hope he doesn't get the concussion test. And then he sits off. But came back on, patched up. He was good as gold. So it was good of him. Um, you know who is surprising me? I'm, I'm trying to find him on my list. But Ollie Wines... 69. 69 again. He, how much did he drop? Like, uh, he has dropped. He's had a few terrible weeks. He's so dropped 40, he's be... 44.5K already. Well, yep. he'd nearly get 500K now. Yeah, he's uh, – no, still 536. 536. Okay. But, so but he's he got a – yeah. he's only got a highest. He's only got a highest of 93 and a lowest of yep. 69 in that game. Yep. yep. And we, we picked at the uh, the start of the season that he's uh, he's a slow starter. It normally takes him until about round eight, round nine to get going. So if he's sitting at around 500K come round 10, I'm jumping on. He, he comes home hard every year. Mate, he's nearly going to sit there, though, as one of the poorest Brownlow medalists if he keeps this kind of form up. He had a fantastic yeah. year when he won it. I'll never take it away from him. He had a fantastic year when he won it. But he hasn't really done much to follow up. But he has finished strong. You're right. Uh, I wouldn't be. Mm -hmm. We talked about him as a sleeper. Don't sleep on him. But he has started slowly again. Mate, Rosie was great. Good to see Rosie do that again. Horn Francis still piped up with a, an 84 after what was a really slow first quarter as well. So I'll take yeah, 84 for his price at the moment. Uh, yeah. Um, a, a little favourite of mine, I guess, who's really starting to grow on me is Pow Pepper. He goes <laughs> nuts at the ball. He's, he does. Like, he's, he's just like he, a little bull that runs through. And he, he's a big dude. Oh, mate, just, you wouldn't. You wouldn't want to get in the way of him, would you? No. But, you know, he yeah. bumps someone or he does something hard that bounces people off him and he just stands there and smiles. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, mate, Adelaide had a big game. Rory O'Brien yeah, with yeah. the 121. Rankin yeah. just seems to be a, a quality pickup at, at 117. Dawson just doing what he's doing in that back line. He just seems to be a beam of consistency at the moment in defence. Um from a super coach standpoint as well. I don't think you can go too wrong with a Jordan Dawson. Um, and Rory Laird with a 114 as well. There was a few fun tweets going around about Rory Laird. One minute he was on 26 and everybody was like, what the hell are you doing? And literally, mate, five minutes later, he just jumped to 62, like out that's of nowhere. Right. It was just, mm -hmm. that, that's what Rory Laird can do. But I think the big story out of this game, and it's kind of away from super coach chat, but just to be aware, uh, Riley Philthorpe, and that's a, that's a mouthful. I'm not saying that too many times and getting it wrong. He emerged himself into the game, and I don't think he's ever going back to being a sub or playing sample footy again. I think they've got to play this guy. If I'm right, he was a number two pick, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm correct. Um, yeah, he's got to play. They've got to keep playing this guy now. He, he showed that really he can good. play good footy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, your boy Keys as well, 19 touches, 57 points. He's definitely in that forward role. Yeah, and, and and not showing enough relevance. So I think where mm -hmm. to to classify why is my boy, as I've talked about, at what point do you look at him for a bit of relevance when he gets that DPP? But yeah, yeah he's not getting enough points, and um, so I just wouldn't touch him at the moment. There's other guys like the Rochelles and that that are probably getting a little bit more midfield time or sort of pushing up the ground a bit more than he is. Um, so yeah, do you know one who I like the look of as a player is that Bergman? I I, I rate him. I think he, mm. he's a he's a Horn Francis lookalike. I think this, the yes. uh, the South Australian Times or whatever it was put him on the calendar and and said it was Horn Francis that they look that much alike. But he looks pretty yeah. good. He only got seventy five points. I just think he's somebody that um, yeah he goes all right as a footballer actually. Yeah. Um, Gold Coast and Geelong. Talking of upsets of the round, Gold Coast with a seventy three to fifty four, and Geelong Cats as a Hawks man. It definitely doesn't pay me to say this, but it's lovely to see them at 0-3. I 
I'm not going to lie. Mm. I'm not going to lie. They just look slow. Did you watch any of it? It was a terrible yeah, game. Upset of the year. Terrible game, though. The football in the first half was just horrendous. <laughs> yeah. But um, so, there's probably yeah, one yeah. bloke that looks worse than Jake Stringer on the footy field at the moment. Who's that? And that's Tommy Hawkins. Oh, he does. He, I mean, we all know he had no preseason. We all know mm. that he wasn't meant to come back till four or five weeks into it. Yeah. But yeah, it doesn't look good. Even like having a set shot doesn't look good. Yeah. Um, who does look good? Is he, Jeremy, Jeremy Cameron. Yeah. If they didn't, if Geelong don't have Jeremy Cameron in these first few weeks, they're getting pumped in every game, if you ask me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's he's the beam. But I think the massive story out of this one and a few people that banged their heads against the wall was the four-week announcement of an injury for Tom Stewart and then he only misses one and then comes back and pumps out a 167, albeit against the Gold Coast who was sort of just aimlessly kicking that ball forward and he just was able to pick them all off. But far out, he's, he's a good player. Very, very good. Yeah. He, he nearly made the break even. I think he needed something like, I think he's had like a break even of like 250 or something. And he's he's pretty much like nearly going to get there. Um, you know, his break even still this week is 161. So you'd think that he's going to drop again. But, mate, he scored 167 this week. So I wouldn't put it past him. Um, but, uh, you know, Wits keeps doing it. I said at the start of the season, Wits, choosing between that Wits English Darcy type number. Wits getting another 124, albeit against Geelong, where most people are scoring pretty good. But Segler was playing this week. Mm-hmm. Lakosha's actually kicked some goals. I still don't think he's not super coach relevant. He's not. Um, no. Took Miller consistently getting over that 100. Um, who else stood out for me in this game? Do you know who looked good? He got a bit quieter as the game went on. Is Lockie Weller. Lockie Weller was playing good. that runoff, runoff back role. He got 81, yeah. took a lot of the kickouts. I think he slowed down a bit as the game went on. But, um, yeah, Lockie Weller looked pretty good to me as somebody that you could look at in that defensive back line role. But there wasn't too much else. Um, for me, I'm still having a good look at Jed Bowes um, this week. Having He has his price change week. He only got in the 60s, but in a game that Geelong wasn't playing very well. I think when Geelong bounced back and they're up and about, I think they got West Coast this week who I'm waiting for my phone to ring for a possible call-up to play. Um, they are that short, aren't they? He could he could really bounce back in a front running team. So no. that's, yeah, Geelong have Hawthorne. Well, even still, they could get a nice win against Hawthorne and uh, mm-hmm. and bounce back all right there. There you go. If, there, if there's a team you want to play to try and get back on a win, it's Hawthorne. But yeah, I, I mean, you got to back Geelong to get the job done against the Hawks. They're not going to go zero and four. Um, they've got to turn things around. They've got to start this week. Yeah. Your mate, Tommy Atkins, I'm pretty sure. Doesn't your miso have him in your team because you heard something you mentioned in a podcast, mate? He goes all yeah, right again yeah. with another 91. Yeah. yeah she's got him. <laughs> tell, she's... tell that story. I think it's a good story. Tell that story quickly about how you... No, that um... just, yeah, she was she was creating her team and she put him in and I asked her. But you asked her to make a team, didn't you? You asked her to make yeah. a team based on what she's kind of just heard on the yep. pod. Yeah, yep. and she's put Tommy Atkins in because he's a, a dual position player and she supports Geelong. And, yeah, sure enough, I think he's he's probably averaging like 90, 95 at the moment and he's got that mid-defender status as well. So, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's I a kept trying to recap it in my head when you said it. And I remember it was very early on and you yeah. talked about how he finished the year and with Joel Selwood not playing, that he was a very genuine opportunity to um, – to rise up, mm. so mm. mate, it's good to know we've said some we've said some good things. It's probably the me, only yeah. time she's listened to me. P.S. So, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, mate, she's good. mate, you're you're a hardworking man. You get home at late nights. You jump on. And you finish the pod. Maybe it's the only way she does hear your voice. I'm sure she's listened to the pod more than you think, mate. So maybe. Yeah. <laughs> um, Melbourne and Sydney, mate. We've got two games to go, everybody. Melbourne and Sydney, um, big bounce back game for Melbourne and a huge 150th for Clayton Oliver and a sign of resurgence from Brody Grundy. What else did you see in this game, mate? Uh, it's amazing what a week in footy does. Grundy looks really good, didn't he? It is Sydney. It is Laddams. So it, it is Sydney and Laddams who's... Yeah, second rate at best, but he did look a lot better this week. Um, mm. Petraka starting to come back into form a little bit, 119. He would have dropped as well. Uh, Oliver, I had the C on him, thank Christ. He saved me a little bit this week with his 156. Yeah. Uh, Chandler, 90 again. Van Ruin, 89 in his first game. 
I think that'll that'll be about as much as Van Ruin will score as he was yeah, he three goals two late goals. and two yeah. and two goals late. Two goals really late in the game yeah, when Sydney time and six, six tackles for a you know a, a key position ruck a key mm. position forward. Sorry, is a lot. Uh, Brayshaw, you've got him. Is he going to leave the side? He's. I think he has to. I watched him play, and I think I was thinking about a few things while watching the game. So Hibbard was back this week. Brayshaw at certain points was doing a job. At certain times he was on Heaney. At other times he was on. Uh, I think even Warner when he went down there. So he's doing more of a job and not getting that sort of off the back handball as much. And the other one I looked at is Salem still got to come back into that side. So for me, mm. I need a bit more assurity. Um, and that might sound a bit weird with the move that I might make, but I am having a really good look at Will Day um, to come into that back line, considering I have Dacos, considering I have Doherty. Will Day to get me a little bit of cash. I like the role that Will Day is playing, and it might actually allow me to move um, a Canelio to a Clayton Oliver, which is a set-and-forget primo mid. Um, or... I try and find one more cash cow and use one more boost, which I don't love doing. Um, and I just do the Canelio to LDU and do another cash cow with with Chesser being injured and out for quite a while by the looks of yeah. things. So I've got a few things to toss and turn with. I really don't want to use the um, boost, but I've got to be if I'm gonna make moves now, I'm not taking any risky moves. They've got to be smart, educated moves. Um yeah. And if I you're think, saying Chess is out, I'm pretty sure he's done his knee. He was in a okay. knee brace at the end of the game. Yeah, uh, I'll find out the final word. I'll let everybody know when I know. But yeah, I think he was in a. I think he was in a um a knee brace. Yeah, I've never watched a bloke more for a twenty a score of twenty in my life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think he's he hasn't found his straps yet. Look, if he's fit, no. everyone's playing at West Coast at the moment. But I think his knee didn't look good from what I've heard. So okay. yeah, yeah. And I've got to strengthen that back line a little bit. So if I do, if I do, um, if I do Brayshaw today, and then I can do uh, Canelio to LDU, and I can actually do a Chesser to Jed Bow, uh, oh. Jack Bowes. Who I don't mind. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we'll see. We'll have a look. There's a yeah. long way to go. I haven't really looked massively into trades just yet, but I would love to have Clayton Oliver into my side. Not going to lie. Yeah. No one really from Sydney stood out. Callum Mills just doing his thing. Um, Goulden still, yeah, yeah. still finding a way to score 85, which you'll take for his price and the role that you're sort of asking from him. I mean, I know people get greedy and say they should be getting more. Um, but yeah, no, there wasn't too much else. They were disappointing. Um, Heaney, but again, they'll find a way again. to bounce back. I like their list. I like their list. He, yep, Heaney thirty eight again, so he'll drop a lot. Yeah, he's been he's been right off. Like, we got that one spot on. Um, yeah. As I said, you got to look at someone and how they got their points the year before, and will they kick that many goals again? And he just hasn't. So mm. yeah, makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um, and we finish with the, the Western Derby or Derby. Are you a Derby man? Do you say Derby or are you yeah, a Derby? Yeah. Um, oh, they're Perth teams. Who cares? <laughs> oi, oi. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa. No, I, I like I was going to ask you if you're a Palmer or a Palmy man, but tell you what, we'll move on very quickly from that comment anyway. Yeah, yeah. No, it's – um. um yeah. I, I've watched the game and um, I have Sean Darcy as my ruckman. Yep. He had 52 taps and 20 touches, mm. but didn't look good doing it. Like it's okay. He's a, he's a big, big dude, and he was rucking against Bailey Williams, who, like, he, he's not a big fella. He's yeah. he's definitely just a makeshift ruck to try and get a contest, occasionally win a tap, but just try and be honest in there. Yep. It yep. sort of scares me that it, he only scored 132. Like I. I 132 is 132, but against a good Ruckman, I can see how, like, those scores of, you know, the 40s and the, like, he had 90 odd the week before, but was, <coughs> pardon me, only on 28 at half time. I can see how that's come about now. And mm. to be honest with you, I'm looking at moving him out too. Wow. I don't want to lose too much ball. money still, on him. 
I think they've shown their card, though, that he's going to definitely be their ruckman. They've thrown Luke Jackson a little bit more as a big-bodied midfielder to start it off, and then he moved mm-hmm. forward as it kind of went on and then obviously chipped in and did the ruck a little bit. I mean, I could see why you'd look at it. Um, I, I reckon you've got to be in a pretty comfortable spot to make that move that quickly. Yeah. But, yeah, look, I must admit, I do love that Sarong piped up. Remember I said uh, he's yeah. one I'll be looking at next year. Yeah, I think it's his yeah. second Ross Glendinning medal. He loves the uh, – he doesn't mind the derby. He doesn't mind yeah, when the, the, the lights are on. Um, the worry was, and we, we did mention, Brennan Cox was always going to be a little bit of a worry. From what I heard, he was doing a job on Darling. Um, so it's interesting and, and it's good to know, though, that he can do a lockdown role rather yeah. than just be the floater. You know, I did say um, Luke Ryan was the more, you know, uh, what was the word I used, um, you know, proven player. Um, yeah, he, he is. Came out with a, a 105. James Ace was an interesting one to watch. So James Ace has been playing out in the wing for Fremantle. They dropped Will Brody. James Ace normally only goes in the midfield if he's doing a tagging role. This was the first time ever we've seen him go into the midfield and just be let loose and play mid. And he got a lot of the footy at, at 102 on Supercoach. So one to maybe have a little bit of a look at on whether he's going to play more of that midfield role. Um, the the one that was a bit interesting and I think is going to get the chop soon, and we've talked a bit about him while well, I mentioned him, is Liam Henry. Um, he was a bit fumbly with the ball, tried to do a little bit too much. I think somewhere there, Will Brody might get back into this into this team um, for sure. And uh, what does that mean for James H, whether he moves out? But, yeah, look, they've got to make way for Fife at some point, I think. Um, and I think Will Brody's got to come back into this team as well. But, mate, Fremantle need to lift, and they need to lift well. From a West Coast standpoint, yeah, a lot of injuries. Everyone heard about the injuries. McGovern's ripped the hamstring off the bone by the sound of things. Luke Shuey's done another um, soft tissue injury, so he's a minimum of four weeks most likely. Uh, Cripps broke an ankle and uh, Witherden uh, um, had concussion. Yeah, so I tell you what, Noah Long looks good. Um, Jinby was a great game. Jimby was a really shining light for them. Uh, got the no, uh, Rising Star nomination as well. So I'll tell you what, mate, you saying that he was a chance for Rising Star, albeit, you know, Sheasel's doing what he's doing right now in Ashcroft. But, you know, he's got the the third nod for Rising Star and he looks very good. He's not going to win it, but he's definitely a good chance to be in that top three, especially now he's going to get more opportunity for sure. I'm, I'm going to ask you two things because mm. this has so, kind of come across my mind. Barras for West Coast. McGovern gone. Is he going to play McGovern's role and score well now? Nah, because he has to play the lockdown role. He has to play the lockdown role. I don't think they've got anyone else really to do it too much. I think the one you've got to probably have a look at is um, – I'm trying to see what he – the one you've probably got to look at is Shannon Hearn to get a lot okay. more of the footy coming out of the back line. I mean, he still scored 89. Um, 99. I remember. Oh, uh, 89, sorry. Yeah, 89. No, right. yeah, yeah, 89. So he's he's got to do it. Does he float across and take the marks like McGovern does? I don't think anybody does. So Barras could start taking a few more marks, that's for sure. Like they might let him jump a bit more and Hearn takes the body. So probably look for Barras in that way. He still plays that role very differently to McGovern does. Um I know a lot of people that, you know, a few people started throwing out the Sam Petrescu seat and, you know, who maybe rises up now to get the points for for West Coast. I think West Coast really start to struggle now and I don't think anybody just massively starts getting points. I think they just start getting beat um, and no one really shines through. I think Jimby's going to get his opportunities. Jaden Hunt's been nice for him. He's been a nice little pickup doing the run out of the back line, but I wouldn't start jumping all over people. The only one to be aware of now is is Elliot Yo comes back into the team, um, I, and I think they'll I think they'll have to put him straight into the team and and see how he goes. Um, would you take a risk on him taking him early before you know his price change, unless you really have to and you want to be that person that possibly gets a jump on people? Yeah. But I wouldn't do it just yet. I need to see him play a couple of games and know that his body's going to get through it. That's right. How good was Frederick's goal celebration? <laughs> Mate, don't you wish you could be able to do that? <laughs> I just, sometimes I just wish, yeah. Mate, to bust out a little backflip uh, was pretty special. I, I like seeing it, mate. I, I like seeing I a bit of animation. I think it's great. I definitely love seeing interaction with the crowd. 
Um, you know, speaking of memorable moments, how good with Hugo uh, Hagen? I thought that was really impressive. I think mm-hmm. for a young, a young, proud Indigenous man to do what he's done, and just just as a human in general to to go through yeah. what he went through this week and step up the way that he done is is phenomenal. Um, yeah. and a really yeah. touching yeah. moment yeah. to sort of Nicky Winmar with the the thirty year anniversary piece of it as well. So yeah, mm-hmm. credit to him. Um, but to see celebrations and things like that, they're special moments. They still give you tingles and we play our highlights package at the start of every podcast and who knows, some of those kind of commentary moments will be some that we might be playing on our podcast in, in 20, 30 years from now, mate. So, um, yeah, I love that stuff. I, I, I really love it. I think it's great for the game and I think we need more of it. That's cool. That's cool. So what um, – we'll, we're getting close to sort of wrapping up. We've given a few people a bit of thought here when we drop a pod wednesday night which will probably drop thursday we'll talk more about captains vice captains we're going to start talking more about how you can use the loophole today last weekend there were a lot of opportunities we talked about it on where you could start someone with the emergency and be ready for some of those people that are out and put them on your ground knowing that you can flip someone else on um have you had a look at any is anyone sort of standing out to you i know people have already been asking us who's standing out to you as somebody you're looking at or people might be looking at to bring into their team this week so for a backline player sard 100 yep. percent for a mid ldu for a ruckman english for a ford golden yeah it's a nice shout it's a good shout for mm-hmm. me for me, the back line is if you're looking for a value piece in a defender is Will Day um, yeah. from a try get ahead of the game and, and take a little bit of a hit maybe cash-wise. You just get Tom Stewart back in your team and throw him in there. I think Dawson's shown in consistency. The, yeah, midfield for me, the midfield for me is uh, if you can afford Clayton Oliver, there's no bad time to get him in. LDU is going to have a massive jump. Don't forget Hopper. Hopper's about to play his third game as well, and his second game looked a lot better getting the midfield time that he did. Um, your rucks, your rucks are spot on. I think it's the same. Your, your English and your wits have been the consistent ones all year. Um, but don't don't sleep on Nankervis if you want somebody a little bit different. Um, mm-hmm. And you're right in that forward position. Um, Gordon looks good. The one curveball I'll throw into that midfield as well is Jordan Degoe. If you want somebody a little oh, bit yeah. different, I think Jordan Degoe is showing that he's going to put up some consistent numbers this year in a Collingwood time in a Collingwood team that's just racking up points for fun. Yeah, but, yeah, mate. We'll dive further into it. We'll make sure we go and do even further research to see who's moving up, who's moving down. There's a lot of two gamers in there as well that are going to have their biggest price jump um, and look at some cash cows, some captain choices, um, and some trades. Make sure you hit us up on all social media platforms. Ask those questions. We'll bring them to the pod. Um, make sure you subscribe as well. It's down there now. Um, but, mate, any final words from you, Mr. Dell? No, looking forward to getting into our uh, captain and vice-captain uh, selections when we uh, record tomorrow night or Wednesday night for the uh, for the viewers. Um, we'll go through some break-evens as well, I think, and some price drops yep. and, and try and forecast how much money – we think players are going to drop and when an ideal time to pick them up will be. So for the people who are watching and haven't subscribed, please click like, subscribe, send through your questions. Rob especially is very good at the social media. I'm slowly learning. I'm still on typewriters, so I'll get there. But send your questions through. And there's still time for you. If you want to win a standard squeeze pack each week, our league code, as you can see down the bottom there, 237113. Jump in. You'll be competing against almost 300 other people, but these squeeze packs with the four and one, my God, they'll change your life. Absolutely. Mate, my only final shout-out for tonight's pod is actually to one of our close mates, and uh, I give him the shout-out as the producer of this show. Nathan yeah. Brain has been doing a phenomenal amount of work behind the scenes to, to really keep this podcast the way that it is, those ads that he's putting together, the things that he's doing out on social media. He is making us look phenomenal. Every time we maybe bring the quality down, he keeps boosting us back up. So to Nathan Brain, shout out to you, mate, and to everyone a part of the Molten Fantasy Sport crew. We love you. Keep putting out the content. But to all our listeners, thank you for the support. We'll catch you on the next pod. This has been the Molten Fantasy Sport Podcast. Peace out. See ya.